collectors of volunteer helpful hackers and we aim to make the digital world safer by reporting vulnerabilities we find in digital systems to people who fix them who can fix them we have a global reach but we do it Dutch style open honest and collaborative and that sometimes makes people unhappy so I'm a bit stressed out uh, because this just happened this is a statement from the vendor saying that that account that's named super admin is in fact not a real system administrator and is not subject to our testing group with sort of abilities to carry out function tests. We are just informed once in early July and then took the actions immediately. Um, they asked uh, and then they asked us not to give this talk. So, this can either be short, <laughs> or not. <laughs> Open, honest, collaborative. We're not going to propose this disclosure. We've given the vendor till 20 minutes ago to come up with a reaction. Uh, I've not yet received such reaction. Um, I will check my phone at the end of the talk. <laughs> so who am I? My name is Frank Bredek. I'm case handler for DIVD case 2022-0009. I'm a crisis manager at DIVD and my day job is the CISO at Schubert Phyllis. This is how you reach me. And it all started with an honest tweet from Celestine, one of our DIVD researchers who noticed that her parents had solar panels that were, had Omnic converters in them, and Omnic went bankrupt, and now the inverter is sending its data to SolarMan in China. Funny, haha, in a kind of GDPR way. Um, this talk, although it is an issue that data of European citizens just get sent off to China, this talk is not about GDPR. I was expecting a sigh of relief. Um, but the tweet was followed up by a tweet from Jelle. <clears throat> Smart. Showing how he logged into SolarMan with the Superman user, super admin user. So who's Jelle? Jelle Ursem, he's not here. He's taking a vacation, well-deserved vacation. But he's the main researcher on this. And some people may know him as SchizoDucky. Some people know him a little bit more than others. <laughs> Um, what does Yellow do? Well, he's a programmer architect, does DevOps, is good at finding passwords in things like public GitHub repositories. He's done hundreds of responsible disclosures in the last three years. If he knocks on your door, he's in trouble because he didn't have to knock. He could have just walked in. He had the key. And he, too, is surprised about all the brands he's been able to get into so far. And he needs to add one. So this happened in February, and um, yeah, now what? And back in February, uh, sorry, back in April 2021, uh, DIVD wasn't what it was now. We were still developing what we did, what kind of cases we took. And did this not qualify as a DIVD case then? It does now, by the way. Uh, so we reported it to Solomon. We did help Jelle um, reach them. And although we didn't, never got a reply back, um, the password was changed a few days later. Case closed. Life goes on, and we fast forward to February this year, and Jelle reads the blog post by Jan van Kampen. Don't know if you're here, Jan, but if you are, good post. Um, about problems with connected inverters. And that made us wonder, or it made Yellow wonder, is Solar Man still OK? Not really. He could log into the super admin account again. 
So what have we got? What did we find in the GitHub repository? Uh, yeah, that's Solarman, but not this one. So Solarman claims by themselves that they are a professional remote monitoring and management is my addition solution for devices. Devices from Solarman, Solis, Omnic, and Ginglong. Mostly inverters, loggers, and batteries. And um, yes, these were the super admin credentials for the monitoring platform. So what could we do apparently with this account? That's read the data of all the users. And we've confirmed that. We could see names, we could see addresses, we could see email addresses, we should see current and historical generation. We could create and delete users, change configurations, calibration offsets, read and clear errors in the converters, download firmware versions, upload new firmware. We had an upload screen. Uh, yeah, basically, this is the list of build your own inverter botnet. Um, we haven't tested this because of ethics and our code of conduct. Proportionality, if you want to do um, responsible disclosure, you have to, to be your measures, your tests do not have to be worse than what you're trying to prevent. Uh, also, it has to be subsidiary. That means if you can use the smallest, a small hammer and a big hammer, you should use the smallest hammer possible. Um, this would have been too big a hammer uh, at the wrong time. But we did confirm the data in there. We did confirm that the GUI showed us these possibilities. So what numbers are we talking about? Well, these are the numbers from February. And remember, it's winter in February. Globally, there were over, close to a million plants, locations with solar panels, of which 42,000 in the Netherlands, 7,000 in uh, Germany, 7,000 in uh, Belgium, and about 13,000 in the UK. Together producing, in February, 10.03 gigawatts. That's serious numbers. So what's the impact for the Netherlands? Well, if you take 40,000 plants with an average of between 4 and 10 kilowatt peak per plant, you add some bigger plants, like the ones we've listed here, um, you can combine, come up with a combined power of 400 megawatts. That's a little bit bigger as this thing here. And that's the Felsen 25 electricity plant on the Hoge of the Rhein in Felsen. Yeah, so what could you do if you had admin? Install custom firmware, create a botnet, use lateral movement, so move from the converter further down into the network, physically damage or overload the converter. Uh, that could lead to bricking it or overloading the device. We could lock the vendor out change their password, see how they, yeah, what would do that. Could you hurt the grid? I don't know, I'm not a grid expert. I know some people who know something or know people who know something. One plan shouldn't be a problem. And it's not a novel idea to hurt the grid. Um, this was sent around during the farmer protests earlier, uh, earlier this month, on the 4th of July. To all farmers and owners of panels and windmills, let's all turn off our solar inverters on the 4th of July. Wind power too. We want to make a statement that 20% of all green power comes from farms. If we do it all at the same time, we can cause outages. Turn off at 4th of July, mid of day, bam. This is a forward message to forward. Well, if a bunch of farmers can come up with this idea, I mean, I know farmers are smart, but um, nation states? I think they're smarter. Uh, and taking panels offline is one thing, but what if we go and use, and use it to do aerobics exercise? Take it up and down, and up and down. That would cause a serious problem on our grid. Or take all the panels in the north of the Netherlands offline, and then once power is ramped up there, turn them back on and turn on all the power in the south of the Netherlands. That would be fun. We have GPS coordinates. So, Getting this fixed was a long and windy road. This credential was actually committed to GitHub on the 5th of August, 2019. 
We discovered them in April of 2021. It was changed. In February, we noticed it was working again, and we opened the case. And by the way, we welcomed Yella as a researcher in our midst uh, in the IVD. We contacted the Dutch National Cybersecurity Center. We notified the vendors on the 9th of February. Um, we worked with the NCSC, and so on the 20th of February, they worked together, with, they contacted NCC and Ellen, this China cert. Uh, we mailed China cert. We uh, got a little help from the Dutch embassy. We, got a, uh, we visited the um, Chinese embassy ourselves. Um, finally, there was contact with China cert, and then th things went really quickly. China CERT really did their job. It's like 17th, we contact them, vendor changed the password. Repository, GitHub repository was deleted. But this thing was exposed for 777 days, at least, because we don't know when it was turned back. What happened in between? I don't know. So it's fixed. GitHub repository gone. Password changed. Um, well, yes, we resolved a situation where everybody could potentially mess with these devices, but there has to be a super admin password somewhere. A party has to control this. Is that a desired situation? Well, the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate has blocked the Chinese company from bidding on the construction of what they call the stop contact op zee a wall socket at sea. And they did this because they think having a Chinese company controlling this much power on the grid is a security risk. So what about those solar panels? You may wonder why doesn't anybody do something about this? Well, Grid operators and energy companies have no authority over what happens behind the smart meter. If you overload your local grid, your fuse burns, you're off the grid. Problem solved. Um, they can't put any regulation or any enforcement in place. Building codes are about electrical safety, and we have an authority for IoT and IoT devices, but yeah, they can only interfere when devices are insecure. There's new regulation underway that requires registering and certifying devices if you want to sell them to consumers, um, which you probably can circumvent by going to AliExpress directly, but different matter. But even if these devices themselves ever become 100% secure, you still have a foreign party that controls a major amount of power in the grid. So that brought me back to the opening talk that Miko Hippenen gave, where he said, we're doing security. We're no longer securing computers. We are securing society. So statement from the vendor. Let me check. <laughs> I have a statement. <laughs> Dear Frank, this is Wei, and I'm responsible for marketing department. Thanks for your reply, and thanks for any way for Dutch ethical hacker finding an issue, a issue for us. At present, we're absolutely off the court with the upcoming disclosure and communication time left us is extremely limited. It's an opinion. For now, I can only say, firstly, the account is subject to testing group and not a super admin account, which later we can prove, provide proof in details. Secondly, uploading firmware via the account is fine, But no actual control function is workable as real operation needs verification and subject to authorization from inverter 
manufacturers. Okay. Thirdly, the account is not related to any account of other customers and won't affect their PV plans. At last, the account is now in safe condition. I hope that means they implemented two-factor authentication. Therefore, believe, we believe that there's no effect to TV plant operation in the system. In case you want to go public with the case, please do keep above facts in your statement, as we've done. And we expect not to mention the product name in disclosure, too late, <laughs> and won't expect any exaggeration before clarification. I hope I didn't. Personally, I think we can create long-term cooperation with your organization to offer services to our customer in a much more secure way. I hope so, too. So we're really grateful that they are reaching out, that we are in contact now. Uh, we want to thank the China Cert for help brokering this contact, because um, obviously good with everything coming from China, uh, that's really important that we have good international cooperation on this. And with that, any questions? Thank you, Frank. We have about 10 minutes for Q&A. So you don't have to walk all the way to the tent of the DIVD, which is uh, over here. So if you have any questions, Beyond this talk, you can always find these guys over here. They have lots and lots and lots of war stories going on, so half of them are not disclosable at all, so <laughs> it's a bit of a shame. Um, any questions? Nobody? Well, <laughs> I have, we have one question. Um, have you looked at the hardware architecture of the inverter and do you think it would be possible to, um, uh, for, for the output AC voltage to, to shift the phase alignment re uh, relative to the grid? So, so, so according to the statement of the vendor, um, the firmware somehow can't magically control this. Um, have we taken, people, kind of get pissed if you take their inverters, <laughs> because they have them for a reason. Um, anybody who has a solar man inverter, well, we, we've, they changed the account, so we don't have the control now. Um, so no, we didn't. This wasn't a hardware investigation for us. This was just a software investigation and a SaaS platform where we found the password from. So we haven't. Um, we're really curious, though. So if somebody is willing to uh, sacrifice their, uh, their Solomon controller, and I guess the likelihood just increased a little bit, um, please come by the village. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you're a big fan of Project Aurora. In the... Okay. Thank you very much. Um, please give uh, Frank a big applause. Thank you for your... Uh... Thanks. <laughs>